Father, we thank you, King of Love, for giving me this opportunity to be in your presence. So, Lord, Father, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Father, commit this word that I'm going to share with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh Lord, Father. Come, oh Lord Jesus, Father, to talk through my mouth, Holy Spirit, to talk through me. Put the right word in my mouth, oh Lord, Father. Father, I'm going to read this word, oh Lord Jesus, Father. 
Give me wisdom, knowledge, discernment to interpret your word also in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I cover this word with the blood of Jesus. I cover myself in the blood of Jesus Christ. I want this to come and take over in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to read Matthew 17. Matthew 17, verse 20. He says, he's talking about the mustard seed, he's talking about faith here. So he's saying in, in verse 20, he says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of you unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall not in... Uh, uh, sorry. Sorry for distraction. Hallelujah. I'll repeat again. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove and to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Hallelujah. As we can see, the word of God is telling us that without faith, with faith we can remove the mountain. The mountain, those mountains that block in our life. Faith is one of the fruit, the fruit that all believers must have continuously. Because as we serve in God, the Bible says God is spirit. And for us to serve him, we have to believe. We have to believe on him. Even though we have not seen him, we have to believe that God is God and exists. You see? Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen a mustard seed? Mustard seed is very tiny, um, tiny. Um, it's very tiny. The smaller seed that uh, the smaller seed is very, very tiny, very small. You know, it's a very challenging Bible verse because when you say that your faith, you have to, if your faith is grain, of, it's like if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, it's talking about grain. It's talking about one small seed. That's small. If you have that small, we can remove the mountain. Now, if you are not removing the mountain, that means our faith is not even to that level of the mustard seed. If our faith is not on the level of the mustard seed, so how small our faith is, if you are still struggling in some situation like you cannot fulfill the word of God in our life, if you are still doubting God in any situation that you may find yourself, that means we have no faith at all. So it's very challenging by both us. When I see the mustard seed, I went to the shop. I look for a mustard seed. As compared to, to I check how small this seed is. And I start uh, doing research about how can mustard seed can mustard seed can grow as a big to become a big plant, a big tree. You understand? <clears throat> so when I saw it, I was like, oh, God, have mercy. If my faith is not yet removing the mountain, that means it has not yet come to the level of that mustard seed. Then that means I don't have faith at all. And it's true. We need to exercise our faith. And for us to exercise our faith, we need to pass through tests also. We need to pass through tests. Our father Abraham became the father of, um, be, be the father of faith because he has also to pass through tests. You have to pass through test. When you when you look at the the image of the Musa, see you see how tiny it is. But when you plant it, when you when you plant it, it become a it become a huge tree, a huge tree. That if they tell you that this tree, the seed is very, it, it was very tiny, you will not believe it. It will be it will grow. That's why God wants us to want our faith to be like a. To be like this uh, mustard seed, because when you plant the mustard seed, although it's the seed is very small, but it can be grow, it can grow bigger. So if our faith is big, in another world, if our faith is big, we can do great things. We can change our own situation. That's why the Bible is telling us that we can remove all the mountain, all the mountain of doubt, all the mountain of uh, you know when you are going through challenges. There is many things that come to our way because of lack of faith. Many things that come in our minds. Ah, maybe I've sinned against God. Maybe God has abandoned us. But for you to pass one step to another, whether we like it or not, we need to pass through tests. The great is your assignment. The great is your calling. The, the great is also will be your challenges. You know, the great will be your challenges. 
Because when you, that's why God wants us to have faith, so that when that time of challenge will come, you can exercise your, your faith to know that, no, God will change my situation. That's exactly why David, David have a lot of faith. He said, although I walk in the shadow of death, you understand? That nothing will come because he knows that the protection of God is upon him. How do you know that your faith is not yet in the... Uh, you have not yet to see, reach the 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 size the size of a mustard seed. When the challenge comes, when the challenge comes, when, then you will know your relationship with God. When the the challenge comes, then you know that yes, you have no faith at all. You you pretend to have faith because you have not yet passed through challenges through tests. But when it comes to the test, then you know that you know through the word that will come out in your mouth. That's why you know that ah. Uh, I don't know the God I'm serving. And Satan will be mocking at us, laughing at us, because we don't we don't know the power of our God. He said, I will be all oh, I will always be with you. I will never leave you. But when the challenge will come, the first language, God, why did you allow this to happen? Why did you abandon us? Be a child of God, you will not stop us from passing through challenges. Be a believer. It doesn't make you it even worse. It's, it's even make you to be passing through tests all the time to exercise your faith that you have because this world we are just passing by. If you can say that, <clears throat> if you say we love God that you have no sin, and when the challenge will come, we don't even know how powerful it is that is wrong. We need to always believe that yes even though i pass it through this situation god is with me he will make a way he said he said in in um in the book of psalm uh, uh, psalms he said in the book of psalms 34 in the book of psalms 34 i think in the book of Psalm 34, verse 19, say, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the law deliver him out of them all. He deliver him because when you call upon him, he will answer according to his word because he's there. The only thing that makes him not to answer our prayer is ourselves. Depend of the relationship we have with God. If our relationship is built in faith by believing that God can change my situation, even if it's one second, even if it's one second, God can change. If you have faith, we can remove the mountain that is standing in our way. We can remove the mountain that is standing in our way. I'll give you two testimonies to encourage you. Whatever situation you may find yourself, exercise your faith. Live a life that you please God. Repent before you exercise your faith. Repent because the enemy will use whatever situation, whatever sin in your life to try to block your blessing. But if you are constantly in the presence of God, repenting all the time, wash yourself, cleanse yourself with the blood of Jesus. By the time you, you, you present your request to God, God will answer you from heaven because nothing is stopping. There's no accusation that's stopping. You know, it was a time <clears throat> when, when I newly came to this country, there was a big challenge. It was a big challenge. There was no giving document like, you know, if you can stay like 10 years, 20 years, whatever years. I saw, I met people here 20 years without any documents, you know. And one day I said, no, 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 I can't wait this long for me to have my paper. So I start, um, I start calling a uh, immigration. So before then, sorry, let me go to let me go back a little bit for me to come to this stage. So it was a time the, the law was given by government. The law was given by government. They say everybody that doesn't have a um, uh, paper, he have to leave the house. He cannot live in the house alone. Then I have big house. I have big house like in those days, you know. I have, I have a house with a three bedroom, which I, I, I'm not supposed to have. I was supposed to have a house of one bedroom, no free bedroom, because many people was on, was on the queue then. I have only one child. I could not have, I couldn't have the, the, the house with bedroom, the three bedroom, and I did not ask for it. So when they gave me, then after a year, they changed their mind after being in country, in the country for so many years, then I did not have paper. So one of these days, they just, the law was given by government, you know, 
they say that everybody that doesn't have uh, uh, um, paper, they have to release the house, you know, people were not living in the council house, all these things. So when the letter was given to me, I told them, I'm not leaving this house because I like, they told me why I said, because I like the house and also I like the area. This area is so good, I can walk freely, all these things. And the, the house is also cheap, so I can afford it even when I'm working, you know, whatever job I'm doing. I, I I can afford to pay the rent, so I want this. I don't want anything that you know you make me very hard, something like that. So when I was, they told me that, but you don't have any document, you cannot stay here. I told them that. I told them I'm not leaving. They say you are not leaving. Okay, we are going to give you two weeks. They offer me one house like this. I, I refuse the house. I say I'm not leaving. I told you that I did not ask for this house since. It's God that gave me, I believe that it's God that gave me because I did not ask for it. I never went to the queue. I never asked for anything you people gave me. So that means it's my blessing. I'm not leaving my blessing behind. I'm not going to leave. So they, took, they gave me two weeks <clears throat> to leave the house. If I don't leave the house, they will come with the police to lock the door and all my staff will be inside. They are not in charge. They are, they are, so they are not going to do anything. There's nothing I can do about it because they gave me opportunity to remove my staff. So <clears throat> I start to exercise my faith then. I start going back to the word of God that says that faith move all, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. So I'll say, God, if you happen to other people, it can also happen to me. So I start praying. So I, from then, I start calling immigration. When I start calling immigration, first time they are so rude people, you know, they rejected the call, they rejected the call, they offered on me several times, but I never give up. I was just buying cards, calling them, asking about my case. One day the woman told me, why do you always call to ask for your case when there are many people that are not even calling? Why you keep on calling? Anyway, your case has been sent to another department. You take the number of this department. The department, they were not picking calls. So at the same time, I was praying about it. I said, God, whatever person that is holding my case, Father, I know the heart of this person is in your hands. At the rivers of Uhuta, so you can turn it to whatsoever you want. So you can turn the heart of this person from the, the having bad mind of giving me, uh, reject, uh, of, of rejecting me, to leave the country, you can also change it for my favor, for your name to be glorified, to give me a testimony that I've been waiting for. It was this particular day, one week has passed. The manager of this place called me. They say, so you're still there. We offer you another house. Come in, come in and see. I told them, I say, I already sent the request to my God and I'm waiting for the answer. Before your time expire, I'll have the result and I'm not leaving this house, I can guarantee you. So the man looked at me, he said, you are very, you are very stubborn. We are giving you all this opportunity. You've been here for so many long. You never have document. It's less than one week that you're going to have document. I say, I believe God will do it. He say, how come? He start mocking. He say, how come all this time you never believe God? Is now that you have to believe God because you're leaving the house. I say, me myself, I cannot tell, I cannot answer, but I know my God will do something. So it remains like it was wednesday i think it was on wednesday yeah no it was not on wednesday on wednesday i called them they told me that your day if um, your day will expire on wednesday sorry it's supposed to be on wednesday they will come whether i will go and drop the key or they will come with the police to lock the door it was on wednesday they told me that your day you finish the two weeks that we gave you finish on wednesday so i was just praying i said god when it was friday i said lord Today is Friday. It remains so many days. I'm not seeing any sign, any sign of paper, any sign of, you know, each time I call them, they'll reject my call. They'll just tell me to wait. So people were just discouraging me to say, why are you calling them? By calling them, you're going to stress them. By stressing them, they're just going to reject your case. All these things. But I was not afraid. I was just praying, believing that God will do something, which he did. So on Saturday, remember, I will, the, my spy date is supposed to be on Wednesday. I pray again on Friday to say that God, to remind God about the date, that the days are going and nothing is happening. 
I was just, you know, praying, crying. Then I start getting, I start getting, uh, you know, I was desperate, getting like, you know, thinking negative things also because we are human beings. At time we we claim to to have. I start like a little bit like regretting in my heart by by rejecting all the offer that they gave me. Now then, by this time. I know that I have no offer left but to leave the house. Where I'm going, I don't even know. They say I have to manage myself. They are not going to help me again because all the help they gave me, I rejected them. I said, God. And I would just pray and say, Father, forgive me if I'm doubting in my heart. Forgive me. Give me the grace, you know, to win this battle. This battle is not mine. I present this request in your hand. I know you never enter into the battle and you fail. You never fail. I know you are going to do something. Then, on Saturday, people used to tell me, those that have documents before me then, they used to tell me that they will say, it comes with, a, the positive answer comes with a small uh, em, a white envelope. If you get the big uh, in the small brown envelope, sorry. If you come to a big white envelope, that means they are, give, they are rejecting your case and you, they want you to appeal or they want you to leave the country, something like that. So then on Saturday, I, I, I was supposed to go and visit my sister-in-law who gave birth. So around 2, 2 p.m., the post used to come twice here in, in London. It used to come twice. It would come in the morning, it would come in the afternoon. They stopped it. It only come in the morning now. So the first time came, I didn't see anything. I ran, when I was about to leave, I checked my post again. I saw big envelope, white. Then it was written, um, home office. My heart just cut. I said, oh, I start to cry. I said, God. I was crying for you to help me in this my situation. What am I going to do with two kids? Where am I going then? I don't have money. I don't have all uh, help. You know, I reject all the offer that they gave me. Now I'm getting, without opening the envelope, I was just complaining, you know, about, you know, about the envelope how big because of what people used to tell me that oh if you see the big envelope is rejection because that giving you opportunity to appeal that's why the envelope is long like that so some i, I just wrote the letter that was so sad then something told me why don't you open at least to see how long do you have before you appeal or before you leave the country so i just decided to open the envelope so when i open the envelope the first thing i'm seeing Congratulations, you have granted the indefinitely leave to remain. I say, what? I start screaming. I was screaming. I say, God, thank you. Father, thank you. You really make me to win this case. So I didn't wait until Wednesday. That was the deadline they gave me was Wednesday. So on Monday, immediately on Monday, early in the morning, I just went to the office. Immediately, the, the mm, those manager, the manager that, you know, the manager of my case, immediately saw me. He said, hey, I'm not assisting you today. I'm not assisting you. Uh, you don't, you, you didn't uh, book an appointment with me. Because you did not book, book appointment with me, I cannot... I cannot even assist you. Go, 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 go. Just wait on Wednesday. Just wait on Wednesday. I was just looking at him. I was smiling. I, I, as he was talking, I was still going to his direction his, in his office. He said, didn't I tell you I don't want to, uh, I don't want to assist you because uh, you reject all my offer, blah, blah, blah. I just took the envelope and threw it on the table. He said, what is that? I said, open it. So immediately he opened, he saw that, oh, they have given me my paper. And just like I said before Wednesday, my God will do something. And exactly what God did. So he just, went, he just told me, leave this place, you witch. I took my, my, my document, I went back. And I start now a play and I claim the house. This is the house that I'm leaving until today. Since 2002, um, 2020, uh, 2000. Since 2000 until now, almost 22 years, 21 years already that in, I'm leaving this house because I was I, I came in this house in May 2000 until today because I exercised my faith. Many people was calling me that, oh, if you call them, you do that. If you call them, when you apply your faith, the Bible is so clear that it says if your faith is, is like, you know, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, 
ye shall in, ye shall say unto the uh, unto this mountain remove end to uh, to yonder place <clears throat> to yonder place and it shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible unto you the bible is telling us in um, in Psalms uh, in the book of Psalms 138, verse 7, say, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou will revive me. Thou shalt strengthen forth thy hands against the wrath of my enemy, and thy right hand shall save me. So let us always believe that God will never abandon the righteous. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but because of that, God allowed some situation. It's not because he wants to punish us. He allowed some situation because he wants us to exercise our faith. To exercise our faith, to know Him, to believe that God exists. For you to believe that God exists, God have to do something in your life. What is your testimony about faith? What you, what happened to you, and you practice faith, and it works for you? You need to give testimony for you to see how good our God is. Some people they had sickness that have no cure, and they trust God, and God healed them. That's their testimony of faith that they trust God, which medicine has failed. God has proved that yes, everything is impossible. Is Jehovah Rapha the healer of all sickness and all disease? You know, many people practice faith today. You see, some people they through their faith they say, God, if you are God, I want you to do something to amaze my enemies. Some people they pray for the sick, the sick are receiving their healing. Some people pray for the dead people, dead people are coming back to life because of the the the. Because of their faith, the, the great is your faith, the great wonders you do. It's all about faith. When you open your mouth, the Bible is telling us that the, pop, the, the, the dead and life is on the power of our tongue. If you use our tongue positively by applying, by applying faith, it's going to be for our favor. It's going to bring great things. We're going to do great things. We are going to do miracles. Just like Jesus said, we will do even more than what I did. Everything is possible for those that believe. Faith is, <clears throat> believing is a vitamin of faith. Without faith, you cannot please God. Because God is spirit. And for you to worship him, for you to please him, you have to also walk in the spirit. By practicing faith, you know that by faith I'm talking the Holy Spirit is hearing me. I'm not seeing the Holy Spirit, but I know that he's hearing me. He's here with me. I'm not seeing God, but I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it's present through faith. That is faith for you. To believe something that you have not seen yet, but you believe already. You believe already. Because you believe, you accept the word of God in your life. You practice the word of God in your life. Then you are going to see the manifestation of it. You are going to see the manifestation of it. Faith is the key. You believe that. If I walk my salvation with fear and trembling, I will, I will see God on the last day. I'm not talking see him in the dream. You are going to see him all the time because this is the eternity he has prepared for us. It's true faith. Without faith, faith is one of the fruit of the spirit. Without faith, we cannot please God. We need to exercise our faith. But remember, before we, we prove that, before we pass the test of faith, we have to pass through trials challenges that you make us to pass through tests. Our father Job also, he passed through tests. Father Abraham passed through tests. All the servants of God, they passed through tests. We, the children of God, because we believe in him, we must pass through tests. Exercise your test, your, your, your faith. Each time you pass through tests, remember the word of God. It will, call, it will encourage you. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. He is there to strengthen us. Even when we are weak, he is there to strengthen us. May the Lord help us to always practice our faith, to be at least greater than the most said, to try to make it bigger than the most said. Because the mustard seed is so tiny. If the mustard seed you put in your hand, if you drop it on the floor, depend of the area. If the area is a bit dark, you cannot even see it because it's so tiny. If our faith is not yet reached that level, that means you have no faith at all. And if you don't have faith, there is no way we'll make it to heaven. Because it's one of the fruit that is lacking, that is necessary for us, is, is necessary, we must. We must have it. Without faith, the Bible says we cannot please the Father. 
If if we cannot please the Father, there's no way we are going to see the Father. Continue. If you don't have faith, you always doubt. No matter the situation you face yourself, when they tell you that God is in control, you always say, ah, ah, I've been through this for many years, even if you was there for many years. The Bible says, though you walk in the midst of trouble, God will still revive you and strength for this right hand to save you from the wrath of your enemy. You will not allow your enemy to overcome your soul. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord increase our faith. May the Lord give us the grace to believe and to pray in the word of God. God bless you all. Shalom.